Witness P0800 is the fifth among nine witnesses summoned to appear before trial chamber 5A in the Ruto and Sang trial. He was granted protective measures including a pseudonym, image and voice distortion, and private sessions for some parts of his testimony. He testified in the courtroom in The Hague from the 17th to 26th November. Answering questions from prosecution senior trial lawyer Anton Steinberg, the witness testified that during the campaign for constitutional changes on 1st October 2005, he attended a meeting where Mr. Ruto said to the crowd that white mushrooms were still in that area and they should be uprooted or eaten, which the witness understood to mean that Kalenjins should send away Kikuyus. About violence after the elections, the witness said that Kalenjins had already trained their youth in preparation for the war after the elections. Can you describe the Kalenjin who were manning these roadblocks? What were they wearing? What were they carrying? What details can you give us? They were carrying, others had spears, others had bows and arrows, others had rungu, or uh, heavy sticks that were, uh, and others just carried, uh, were, were, were busy carrying stones. And the, on the roadblock, they, there, was, there was fire. They lit fire in the middle of the road. Now, you've mentioned the burning of a house. You've mentioned seeing dead bodies in a police Land Rover. Did you yourself ever see anyone being killed during that period? Yes, Your Honor. In location number two, there was a roadblock. And then it is at this roadblock that I heard people shouting and I heard I, I, and others were running towards the roadblock and I went there to see what was happening, Your Honor. Children were crying and shouting that was, they were being pulled from the, from the, from the, uh, from, from a vehicle and <coughs> their mother too was screaming and speaking in Kikuyu. And what language were the children speaking in? Kikuyu, Your Honor. How many children? Two children, Your Honor. Besides the two children and the mother, was there anybody else in that vehicle? Yes, Your Honor. At the other side, I saw th a man who was being beaten by these youths. He was beaten until he died. In May 2008, witness attended a cleansing ceremony performed by Kalenjin elders in order to cleanse persons who are involved with violence and to make sure curses don't follow them in future, the witness said. Mr. Farouk Kibet, Mr. Ruto's campaigner, addressed the gathering. He said Mr. Ruto was happy from the unity that the people showed during the uh, violence and the unity they had during all time, the hard time that was there during that period. And that uh, he had been sent with a little cash to pay as a sign of to the community. Who had sent that cash? Mr. Ruto, Your Honor. And what became of that cash? People who were there were asked to group themselves according to where they come from. And the money was distributed, Your Honor. How much money? Sorry, how much money was given to each person? We were given 300 shillings, Your Honor. During the period leading up to the 2007 elections, the witness father said, Cas FM, the most popular radio station in the Rift Valley, was used as a platform to instigate animosity between Kikuyus and Kalenjins by giving Kalenjin leaders a platform to call into the programs and pass certain information against Kikuyus. During the cross-examination, Ms. Shamala Alegandra, counsel for Mr. William Ruto, 
proposed to the witness that the incident the witness reported to the ICC, theft of three phones and 2,000 Kenya shillings, Not while going for shopping on 8th July 2013, never happened. And were you also going to use it to create the impression that you were in danger, even in this protected location in Africa, and use it to get permanent relocation to Europe or America or any other country of your choice? Is that what you were doing? No. Sir, have you ever told the OTP that in order for you to testify, you wanted permanent relocation and an improved life? Have you ever told them that? Several occasions I've said I will not be safe to be in risk areas as I testify. So you've never asked them for permanent relocation and an improved life? Have you ever asked them for that? specifically? No, it has never been in my intention to use this case to improve my life or, or so. During the cross-examination, Ms. Shamala Alegandra came back to the witness testimony about the meeting in 2005, during which Mr. Ruto said that white mushrooms should be uprooted and eaten. The white mushrooms, meaning kikuyus, the witness said that he thought it's because Kikuyus belonged to a church that required them to wear white scarves. The defense showed to the witness pictures of some other religious communities also wearing white scarves. <laughs> So do you recognize which group these people may belong to? Yes, these are the divine church. So in fact, this is the African Israel Nineveh church, isn't it, sir? Yes. And the membership of this church, sir, are the Luos and the Luyas. Am I correct? Mostly, I know the membership of this church to be the lawyers. The witness was also asked why the cleansing ceremony he said he attended in May 2008 was not reported in the press, and he answered that cultural ceremonies such as this one would not be reported and is not subject to public discussion. He rejected defense counsel's assertion that this is a false and made-up story. Mr. Joseph Kipchumba Kigen Katwa, defense counsel for Mr. Sang, presented to the witness a series of audio recordings, and on some of them, the witness erroneously identified the person speaking as Mr. Sang. Regarding the song, Ki Mi Bek Kwenet, which was allegedly used by Joshua Sang to provoke Kalenjins, the defense suggested that the song didn't have instigative content. The witness said that the song conveys a hidden message that the Kalenjins would understand as meaning that Kalenjins would remain in the sea until they take power and those who are not Kalenjins are obstacle to Kalenjins getting on the shore. The witness did not dispute that Joshua Sang was sometimes sending messages of peace, but maintained that he did use the hidden messages like those songs and idioms that only Kalenjin people could understand. The trial continued with the testimony of the seventh summoned witness, P0658. Witnesses are not compensated for their testimony itself. They are only compensated for the losses they may have occurred because they have been called to testify before the court. Just like in national proceedings, witnesses play an important role at the ICC because they allow the judges to establish the truth. So they should not suffer financial consequences because they give testimony. Therefore it is a standard practice that witnesses receive an attendance allowance 
as compensation for wages, earnings and time lost as a result of testifying. The court also covers all the other expenses associated with giving the testimony, such as the travel cost to the location of the trial proceedings and accommodation during the time spent away for the purposes of the testimony only. Thank you.